All right. So so today I'd kind of like to just introduce um, the 5G physical layer. And actually, we're going to go into a little bit more, more detail than just the physical layer itself. Um, there's a few concepts I'd like to cover here, um, mostly starting with this grid that you see on the screen right now. I think this is kind of one of the like most fundamental things to understanding the f 5G physical layer and, and kind of uh, something that you can really build on to understand other, other components and concepts um, in, in 5G. Uh, and this also mostly applies to 4G as well. Most of these concepts kind of came over from 4G. Um, so we're actually going to start really at the, the top level here and kind of jump jump down to a much smaller level and then kind of build back and forth. Um, hopefully, hopefully it'll make sense. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these concepts are very like interrelated um, as as the nature of the time and frequency domains that, that we kind of cover. Um, so yeah, I think I think the best place to get started is this, this grid, I think is is pretty interesting. And it's, it's uh, kind of a good representation of how uh, we we move data over the frequency and time domains today um, and kind of gives us a nice conceptual understanding of kind of what this looks like in time and space in a way. Um, so so really, really, this grid kind of has a lot lot to it. It's it's really compressing a huge amount of data into into a concept that we can really understand very easily. Um, so th there's really two components to this grid. Um, and we can kind of think of them as uh, time and frequency. So the first one on this side is is frequency, and then kind of over here is time. Um, and in fact, this grid is actually denoting one unit of time as well, and um, it's denoted as one subframe. So one subframe kind of tends to be or or is defined in the five G spec as as one millisecond of time. Um, so, so this is kind of like one one overall big big concept is five G kind of separates things in frequency and time, and there's different components to this. So, a subframe is one of the time components, uh, and why it's called a subframe is there's also such a thing called a, a frame, uh, which is ten milliseconds. So you can you can kind of clearly see well, um, there's going to be ten su subframes uh, in a in, in a single frame. Um, because each subframe is one millisecond. So so that's kind of the base unit of time that we, we can kind of see here on this grid. But there there's still kind of a lot more more going on here. Um, in, in the grid, you can kind of see one thing pointed out already, and that's this uh, resource block, right? So this resource block is is this whole red area on, on this picture. And, and what this is really telling us, um, you can kind of see see the blue lines here that are saying, oh, this is 12 sub carriers. Um, and this is actually kind of the introduction to the frequency domain um, in 5G. Like a resource block is essentially um, generally the, the smallest unit of, of the frequency domain that you'll kind of see represented in the, in the spec or, or in terms of like actual resource allocation. So one thing that's pretty important to know about the resource block, well, as kind of denoted here, this is this is always consists of twelve subcarriers, and we'll kind of go into the definition uh, of a subcarrier in, in a little bit. I think we'll kind of go into into a lot of detail um, about these concepts because I think it's kind of fundamental to understanding how this grid is built. I think some people may maybe don't need need quite such a detailed understanding, but I think it was important for me, so I'd like to cover it. Um, so so a resource block, in, in you can think of this again, and this is the frequency domain, this will be 12 subcarriers. Um, and and then in the time domain, actually what happens is the, the resource block is is not defined in the, in the time domain. So so this, this diagram is actually kind of slightly inaccurate. It's more showing a concept than anything else. Unfortunately, since it's not defined in the time domain, no matter what box or boundary you put it on, it kind of doesn't make sense. Um, there, is, there, is, there is kind of one, one note here, though, is that there's also a concept called a sliv in 5G. And this actually kind of then defines uh, a resource block, or we tend to call this an RB or PRB for physical resource block. Um, this sliv will actually say kind of it's more used for resource allocation purpose. Uh, an RB is is not defined in the time domain itself, 
but with when combined with a sliv, then it becomes defined in the time domain. Um, and that that's mostly used at, at resource allocation time. This this is purely kind of building the fundamentals here. Um, and then kind of going down a little bit, we can actually see this resource element. And in fact, a resource element is is defined in frequency and time. Um, so so a resource element or RE, um, as it's often referred to, this is actually one thing that this is one OFDM symbol. And th this is precisely what we're going to go in more detail about is what what defines an OFDM symbol kind of how it's created and, and all this. Um, so, so we'll, we'll, we'll come to this in, in, in one second, but what, what that this is defined as is it's defined in the frequency domain as, as one sub carrier. And then also in the time domain, uh, as well, the duration, uh, of OFDM symbol of an OFDM symbol, OFDM, uh, symbol. So the thing is, OFDM symbols can can vary in in the the length of them, um, and let I think we we'll have to kind of start getting into what what is what is uh, OFDM. So I'll kind of just scroll down here, uh, OFDM and, and OFDM symbols. So the thing is with with OFDM symbols is they can be multiple durations and and this kind of comes down to a a, a concept called um SCS and this is called subcarrier spacing so we can see that this concept of a subcarrier is starting to become kind of important here or actually extremely important here it's essentially defining a subcarrier at at the most fundamental level in 5G is um the kind of the smallest unit that you'll use to carry data, right? So one subcarrier over time will actually carry a stream of data and there's no unit smaller than a subcarrier. So you can actually, a subcarrier is kind of just a wave itself uh, or, or one frequency. And we'll kind of see, see how, how we end up constructing a lot of frequency in, in 5G using, using subcarriers um, and how they're defined over time. And, once you use a subcarrier over time, that's what defines kind of an OFDM symbol. Um, and that, that's exactly what we see here too, right? Is we see, okay, well, the frequency uh, or, or the kind of bandwidth, I guess, is you can kind of refer it to uh, is, is one subcarrier worth and the time is, well, whatever that duration becomes. And that, that duration is inherently linked with the, the subcarrier spacing and uh, I think we'll we'll start to have to draw to see why, or at least that's that's the representation that makes the most sense to me. So so kind of kind of going back, um, let's 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 do one thing. I think I think I saw I saw one diagram that really helped me kind of understand, and it goes through the frequency and time domains kind of separately, and kind of linked. So there's actually three graphs that I'm gonna draw here because they're they're not entirely. Uh, this first one's actually not quite entirely accurate. It makes sense, but it's not it's not totally accurate to what the wave is actually represented like in physical space um, and time. So so the first thing we'll we'll kind of do one thing first and and we'll make some assumptions here. So we we just kind of introduce this concept of of subcarrier spacing. Um, so here we'll actually say that the subcarrier spacing is fifteen kilohertz. And 15 kilohertz, um, this is what LTE uses also as its subcarrier spacing. Uh, there are no other subcarrier spacings in, in LTE except maybe NB-IoT. Um, but 5G, on the other hand, has uh, multiple SCS values that, that you can use to transmit data. And that can be 15, 30, 60 120 or 240 currently, and I think there's plans to expand this in the future with release 16 and beyond. Um, so, so for this example, we'll take subcarrier spacing of 15 kilohertz. So, kind of, I mean, uh, on one hand, you can say this, but what does it really mean to have a subcarrier spacing of of 15 kilohertz? Well, I guess one one thing that we can do is we can kind of look in the in the frequency domain and say, okay, well, I have say a wave and th this is kind of 
the thing is, we kind of have to understand Fourier transforms here just a little bit to understand kind of how you map between the time and frequency domains. So for, for, this, for this purpose, we'll kind of just look at the frequency domain here and say, well, we have 30 kilo, kilohertz and, and 45 uh, kilohertz. So what will happen is this means I'll, I'll kind of draw a few different colors here is we have we have some wave here at 15 kilohertz. And this is a very poorly drawn wave, unfortunately. Um, but so so the peak of this wave is is at this 15 kilohertz mark. And then we can see by 30 kilohertz, it kind of completely falls off. Um, and this is this is just the nature of of the waves, and we'll kind of draw something similar uh, for 30 kilohertz here. Similarly, the peak is there, and then also 45. We'll kind of draw the same thing. Sorry, my hands a little a little shaky as it went off the table. Um, but but again, we have this peak here, so. But if we look at the distance between the peaks, well, we can definitely see, as, as we kind of noted down below, well, the distance between each of these guys is 15 kilohertz, and similarly on, on this side as well. Uh, and if, if we look at where we placed the, these waves, right, we say, oh, well, clearly, like, there's a difference of 15 between, between all of these guys. So that's kind of what defines this subcarrier spacing. Maybe I should draw it in black to make it a little more clear here. Um, right, so... So that's actually what defines this this subcarrier spacing, and you can, and 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 like we said, we can have fifteen, thirty, uh, sixty, one twenty, two forty, um, and probably beyond, and actually even smaller as well, um, and and probably going into the details of of why you might use uh, different SCS is probably um, best left for for another time. I think it's it's kind of an interesting concept in and of itself. Um, and, and this it actually gets into a concept called numerology. So if you want to look a little bit more, um, I would say I would suggest looking into five G numerology. There's some some great resources on the web for this. Um, <clears throat> so so okay. So we're actually trying to create OFDM symbols, but but it kind of is important to understand this this SCS concept. So so now we actually have kind of what what if this would actually be three subcarriers. Well, this is what three subcarriers will look like, and again, it's well, okay. Why why is this three subcarriers? So each of these waves, the one at fifteen kilohertz, thirty kilohertz, and forty five kilohertz, and we'll we'll say that's like actually what's being transmitted. Um, so so each of those is carrying independent streams of data, and. I guess one one concept that we can also cover here is this orthogonality concept. So this is the O in OFDM. So if we actually expand this out into the full the full name, it's uh, orthogonal, orthogonal frequency division, multiple access. Well, frequency division, multiplexing. And then there's also a concept called OFDMA. Uh, which actually kind of has slightly a, a different name is orthogonal frequency division multiple access and this is kind of more talking about how multiple users will actually take advantage of uh, an OFDM based system um, and and we'll kind of end up covering that uh, when we get back to the to the biggest layer <coughs> so so okay so this orthogonality piece is, is very, very important because what happens here is um, we can see that at each of these frequencies, there's only only this, this part of the wave here is contributing. The other two waves, the other two carriers that are carrying data are not interfering, right? So if you have, let's just give this a value of 100, for example, and this a value of zero. Well, we can see that at, at 100, all of these waves at their respective frequencies are contributing the full amount, but they're not contributing anything to the other waves. And, and the beauty of this in communications is that if, if none of these other waves are interfering with each other, 
well, it, it doesn't cause any interference to the data or, or minimal interference to the data. And this can happen in the frequency and time domains um, with effects like multipath or inter symbol interference. So I, I think those are also concepts for another time. But the beauty of this is that if, if you're looking at, say, perfect channel conditions um, and, and perfectly synced devices in terms of time, well, these channels will be completely independent from each other and, and not really contributing at all to each other. And, and that's, that's really important in terms of getting a, a clean signal out. And this allows us to compress a lot of data in, in a very small amount of frequency or a relatively small amount of frequency. So, so now that we have, okay, we, we say these are three subcarriers, but for me that, that doesn't totally make sense, at least in my head, it, it doesn't really make sense. So actually what we'll do is we'll kind of, we'll, we'll kind of make a Fourier transform here um, and actually go and look at, at the time domain instead. So, so earlier we kind of noted that depending on the SCS, uh, the amount of time per symbol will be less. So here we're actually looking just at the frequency component of a symbol, but this is also defined over time. We couldn't have got this graph unless it was defined over time as well. Um, so the amount of time that this is taking actually, so we'll, we'll just write a T here and this will be time uh, or TS and we'll call this time per symbol. Um, this is a TS value is actually kind of uh, different in 5G. It stands for uh, essentially the sampling rate is the time of sampling. Um, but for, the, for this, we'll use TS in, in terms of um, the amount of time for a symbol. And this ends up being uh, one over, over the frequency uh, or the or the SCS rather, so so this is now going to be one over uh, fifteen kilohertz, and we'll we'll see that this ends up coming out to be something around like sixty six point seven uh, microseconds per symbol. So so that that's fine. So that's kind of just defining the 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 time here. So we can kind of say okay, well, let's say this is a zero point in time and this is uh, sixty six point seven microseconds. Or, or something thereabout. Uh, I don't have a calculator in front of me or a, a document specifying this information. So, so now if we look over time, we'll just consider these three subcarriers. And actually, so a normal sine wave, for example, might just look, uh, well, we're actually gonna have to go negative as well here. So a normal sine wave might just look like something like this. But when we combine these three waves, because now we're kind of sampling the whole frequencies, we're going to get something that looks much different, you know, and that's that's what this ends up being um, when we look at this now. I mean, this is like kind of just the raw value or the or, or the, of the signal that's coming into say a receiver, and the wave will look something like this. And similarly, we can kind of we can kind of map this to sound waves in a way. So how we measure sound waves is just a pressure differential. So even though I'm talking to you and you can maybe hear some, some voice inflection, though it's, it's probably pretty minimal, you, you can kind of separate out tones. Similarly here is, well, well here, it looks like just one continuous wave over time. And this is in the electromagnetic spectrum instead of pressure. But it ends up being a, one continuous wave, but we can still actually get out its individual components, individual frequency components. And that's, that's kind of this drawing above. Um, but, but if we were say to, to overlay each of each of these uh, waves, what we might see is, okay, well, let's say 15 kilohertz looked like this. And, and this is probably not very accurate. I'm kind of just, just drawing, um, for example, whereas 30 kilohertz may look like this. And then even more, we have 45 kilohertz, which is more more frequent, right? So all of these waves are gonna add together. So I know this is a very, very ugly drawing. I would, I'd actually much prefer to have a computer draw this for me. It would be much nicer. Um, but for the sake of continuing on, we'll, we'll continue on. Um, so so actually the, the representation I like the most for this and is it becomes a much more clean drawing than what I just drew is if we actually go and kind of look a little bit differently at, at this, and we'll still look over time here, um, but instead of looking at kind of the, the power of the signal, what we'll do is we'll actually just, we'll look at frequency as well. So we're actually kind of gonna map a little bit back to this, 
this graph. But instead, what we'll do is we're going to look at three subcarriers, say these three subcarriers. Um, so when we go back down to this, what we'll do is we'll call, we'll continue to draw them in the same colors. We'll say this is 15 kilohertz. Uh, we'll do this one as 30 kilohertz. And finally, this one at, at 45 kilohertz. So, so the, the thing is here, we'll, we'll actually kind of just like draw some lines as well, is, is that each of these subcarriers, right, we mentioned earlier, are going to have an independent stream of data. Um, so, so say you had a string of, of zeros and ones, maybe zero, one, zero or something. You might map the zero into 15, the one into 30, and this last zero uh, into 45. And then you'll, you'll independently send, send those streams of data uh, over this fixed period of time. And again, this fixed period of time uh, is, is going to be one over that 15K um, or 66 microseconds. So, so now th this is kind of the beauty of the thing, right? Is we can look, go from this graph to, okay, well, the wave looks like this, but then we can map it into frequency and we can see it's orthogonal. Um, but, but now we're actually sending data over waves is, is the beautiful thing is we're, we're mapping some value into here. And uh, how, this, how this is done is a concept called uh, mod modulation. Um, so each of, these, each of these waves is independently modulated. And the beauty with modulation is what I've kind of drawn here is a very simple modulation. This modulation is um, just just like BPSK or or some kind of binary binary coding. This could be like amplitude modulation, which you use for AM waves, or like literally like receiving AM frequencies on your radio, or FM. You know, is you you can modulate waves all different kinds of ways. Uh, in 5G, we, we mostly use a technique called uh, QAM, and this is, this is quadrature amplitude modulation. So this kind of just allows us to, to modulate in a few dimensions, essentially. And what we can do is actually, in this one period of time, we can modulate, say, uh, six bits on, on this wave, maybe four bits on this guy, and maybe just one bit on this guy. So that we, depending on the modulation scheme, we can, we can say, oh, each stream of data will actually carry different amounts of information as well. Um, and, and the only problem with this, you're, you may ask, like, why, why don't I always transmit six bits of information if I can, if I can do that? Well, <clears throat> the problem in doing that is you have to have really, really fantastic channel conditions uh, in terms of, well, maybe your phone has to be very close to the cell tower. Right, and there's there's not a lot of other interference going on. Um, otherwise, you might get knocked down to something something like this, or even even one bit. Um, <clears throat> so actually, I think overall this kind of defines how an OFDM symbol is created. So now, if we look look at it in terms of of an RE, right? Well, we can actually see see from this graph if we look at at this. Well, this this kind of itself has has some bandwidth to it in in, in a way um, if we're transmitting at 15 or 30 like each of these kind of have have their own bandwidth and they're slightly overlapping um, but really it's the the 15 that's kind of defining this so so what we what we can do is well we know an re is is now or an OFDM symbol well, now, now I think the definition hopefully is at least a little bit more clear as well. Now we have is one subcarrier, right? The frequency domain, we have one subcarrier, which is going to transmit um, some data uh, over that subcarrier. It's, it's one stream of data. And then in time, well, it's just the, the smallest unit of time, essentially. The smallest unit of time. And this is really just defined as one over the, the frequency here. So... One subcarrier is we'll we'll just call it fifteen kilohertz uh, or thirty kilohertz. Um, so so you can also kind of see, say for example, we're using thirty k kilohertz uh, SCS. Well, now one over the frequency instead of being sixty six microseconds is now approximately thirty three microseconds. So so you can see kind of you're actually collapsing when you go up in frequency, you're collapsing into a smaller amount of time, but you're using a larger amount of frequency. Um, 
so so if we bring this back to the to the overall overall graph as above well well now i guess i can kind of come back up here so then if we're looking at 12 subcarriers right if if you have an, an rb which is 12 subcarriers well we know now what an re is so so we can kind of actually see what an rb is and the total bandwidth of an rb well if we have 12 subcarriers that are each uh, 15 kilohertz. Well, this actually t turns out to be 180 kilohertz of bandwidth. So, so that's kind of kind of a nice nice thing to know is, oh well, we're actually like when we're looking at RBs, we're we're just looking at a chunk of bandwidth, and that's really what this defines, if you ask me. Is it's just def defining a chunk of bandwidth, um, and the max number of RBs that you have will define your overall channel bandwidth. Um, so, so, I mean, that in and of itself actually kind of builds the grid, but there's one smaller piece that I want to get to since, since I'm already kind of here, uh, cause we've mostly actually looked at the, at the frequency domain. Uh, but I think the time domain is, is also just important. And, and actually the, the RB to RE is like, actually is a, is a pretty huge jump. You're going from, I mean, you're you're looking at one subframe here, which is one millisecond, but we're defining things in terms of of microseconds. So there's a lot of time per symbol, right? This this grid starts to become pretty huge, pretty fast, but it's actually broken down uh, a little bit further. So so this overall big grid does apply, but if you're looking at the whole thing at once, it's all these little little tiny blocks over time. And again, this is still only one millisecond, so you can start to see. Um, just if you conceptualize th this grid, well, if you have, say, say two hundred RBs, which is which can can be the case, well, now you have two hundred by twelve, so y you start to get which is like twenty four hundred or something. So you start to get immense amounts uh, of, of these of these blocks. So, uh, to break it down even further, I mean, the physical layer is. Is operating at very small amounts of time as we can see if we're operating at symbol level well, we're operating in terms of microseconds um, and actually even in OFDM symbols like I kind of skipped over some important pieces but probably will end up going over them at some other point or I'll have some some more notes on, on my website um, about this because I think it's kind of interesting and also always a good reference is uh, share share tech note uh, dot, dot com and there's there's tons of tons of information here um, for 5g resources it's it's quite incredible and that's actually where the diagram ab above came from as well um, so so anyway I'd like to get back to the to the time domain I, I just need to to get that information out um, so if we go back and look at the the time domain now so we kind of defined earlier we have this concept of a frame there's this subframe um, and then smaller than a subframe, and we also know down here there's a symbol, uh, or I mean, I guess we can say this is an OFDM symbol, or an RE. These are all kind of the same thing. Um, but there's actually actually one one important piece missing, and and we call this a, a slot. Oops. We call this a slot, um, and a slot is kind of the first unit that maps into um, the frequency domain as well, or the first unit of time that also maps into the frequency domain. So a frame again is we have this 10 milliseconds, a subframe is one millisecond, and then a slot is now, it's dependent on SCS. Right, so, so one thing that we can see is, I'm not gonna go into too much detail and then we know this is also dependent on SCS. And why why is a slot dependent on SCS? Well, a slot is defined as as fourteen symbols. So you can see if if your symbols have di different durations in time, now your slot also has different durations. So so for the purpose of this, we can we can think of slot duration like this. I'm, I'll actually just enumerate it out. Uh, s slot durations in in five G. Um, so so if there are always fourteen symbols, well. At 15 kilohertz, we have a slot that's one millisecond long. So we can actually see that a slot is in fact a subframe at 15 kilohertz. For 30, for 30 kilohertz, well, now we've we've doubled this. So now it's half a millisecond, and kind of as you go up 60, 
you can see 0.25, 120 is 0.125, and then 240, I guess, uh, is 0.675 or, or something. I don't know the math off the top of my head. I probably should. Um, but it's just dividing by two again. Or uh, it's like 0.6275, I don't know, something, something like this. Um, so yeah, the slot duration will, will vary. So then the the number of of slots in in a subframe, well, you can kind of see that they just become powers of two. Is this is two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four, right? So here you'll have one, you'll have two, four, uh, eight, and sixteen. Uh, and I guess this doesn't necessarily relate to the grid. It actually does kind of expand out the grid a little bit more when you actually are starting to look at it in, in depth and when you're, you're, you're kind of programming. Because um, most of the time, things are not really defined. I mean, things are defined at the symbol level, but you'll always use kind of a slot to index into them in a way. Um, slots are, are pretty important. Um, I mean, everything is defined down to the symbol level. Um, but it's also sometimes only defined to the slot level. So it's important to, to understand a slot. Um, but overall, I think this is, this is mostly, mostly what I wanted to, to cover. I, I actually gave uh, a, similar, a similar talk and explanation at my work um, just, just earlier in the week. And I think it, it's, this is something that I find very interesting. Um, just, just because... I mean, for, for a lot of reasons, it, it starts to touch into a lot of concepts and overall, uh, the grid is really important. You can think about a lot of, in 5G, there's a lot of different kinds of signals that you might have. You know, you have your downlink data, you have your uplink data, of course, um, and that, that's defined in this grid. Um, but you also have other signals that are, that are your reference signals, say your CSIRS. And this is your your channel state information, and this is this is very important because we need to indicate to the network how good uh, the channel conditions are for for us, um, so they they can adjust the data accordingly and say, okay, well the channel conditions are really bad, so we're not going to transmit at a high modulation scheme, because you won't actually be able to read the data. There's too much noise, um, and there there's some beautiful pictures online on on. Um, what higher order modulation schemes look like in, in uh, noisier channel conditions. And you can clearly see, well, from the picture, well, it doesn't make sense that you can decode any data if that's, that's what the signal looks like. Um, and similarly, it goes the other way as well. It's like, well, if I, if I have really great channel conditions and I'm not reporting to the network, then I'm getting a much slower data rate than I should be, should be getting. Um, so, so there's all kinds of these feedback mechanisms and, and other channel state information or, or, or other reference signals that kind of help the network and, and the device or UE communicate with each other um, in order to, to maintain a, a very good mobile connection overall. And I think we can kind of see most of the time that LTE is, is generally a, a, a very stable thing, and I expect 5G to be, to be similar. Um, so, so overall, I mean, and, and again, a lot of this applies to LTE as well. And I guess one, one more beautiful thing is this actually starts to, to kind of map into um, some of the more fundamentals of, of the technology as this is kind of the physical layer or, or we're really looking at, at almost the, the software level implementation here of the physical layer. But you can kind of start to dive a little bit deeper and get into, well, how can I actually say, say build build something that, that starts to actually transmit um, OFDM symbols. And I, I think that's something I'd like to continue on. I, it's a project that I have currently I have, that I would like to kind of move forward with, and hopefully I'll be able to doc document that at least, um, maybe, maybe come up with a video or two as well, kind of going over that. Um, so anyway, I, I, I hope... I hope you were able to learn something. If you have any questions, I I will be I'll be free to answer them. Uh, you can either email me or or leave some comments or or whatever. I don't know exactly where this is going to go. I'm sure it's going to go multiple places. Um, but yeah, please uh please let me know. Ho hopefully this helped. Um, uh, hope you have a great day. Hope you understand a little bit more about the five G physical layer. Um, and and maybe can start and asking some more questions on your own about this with, with some fundamentals uh, built here. Well, thank you guys. Bye-bye.